Hi, everybody. My name is Brian Rinaldi, and I'm a developer advocate at StackPick. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about how to choose your static site generator. As you may know, a static site generator plays a key part in the Jamstack. It's what turns your markup into actual static assets that you can deploy. But there's a lot of options, so how do you choose? Let's talk about that. So if you go to staticsitegenerators.net, which aims to be like a, the most comprehensive list of static site generators out there, you'll see that there are a lot of options. According to staticsitegenerators.net, there's 459 options out there. So it can be difficult if you get to that, something like that, to decide how, how do I pick one? Um, even a site like staticgen.com, which is a great resource because it allows you to filter by language and, and license and other factors, um, or even sort by GitHub stars, it still has a very, very long list. So choosing, even if I were to filter this, can be difficult. So what I'm gonna share with you is what I think are criteria. Obviously, these are my opinions. Different people may have different ways of choosing it, but I'm gonna share with you how I would approach choosing my static site generator. So the first question I would recommend asking yourself in when choosing a static site generator is what is your level of experience? I mean this both in terms of your level of experience as a developer or particularly front-end developer, uh, but also your level of experience with the Jamstack specifically. Have you already built sites using the Jamstack? Uh, are you comfortable with the concepts of the Jamstack before jumping into a new tool? Um, one of the reasons I think that experience matters, or several reasons actually, is that some tools have a steeper learning curve. This is not a criticism of, of certain tools, but, but some of them do require that you learn a lot more um, and there's a little bit of a dif steeper difficulty um, getting to know the tool. Other tools tend to have fewer community resources. These can be, that can be because they're not as widely used or that can be because um, they're newer tools that just haven't had the opportunity to build the community um, resources that other tools have had years building. And then some tools will allow you to, I think, jump into the Jamstack concepts early without necessarily getting lost in learning, say, a new front-end framework if you're not already comfortable in that particular front-end framework. So which tools would you choose if you're new to Jamstack? The tools that I would recommend are Jekyll, Hugo, and Gatsby. And let me explain why. So let's start with Jekyll. Jekyll has been around for ages. It's been, it was for many people like myself, our first foray into what became the Jamstack at the time was just static sites. Um, Jekyll gained a lot of popularity in part because it runs, it's kind of the default static site generator that, that to this day still runs GitHub pages. Um, it is built in Ruby and it uses Liquid as its primary uh, templating language, although that is configurable. Um, Jekyll, so because it's been around for ages and because it was so widely used, has a really big community. It's really easy to find resources to help you. Um, their docs are very good. Uh, Liquid is actually quite well documented as well and is very, in my opinion, very easy to get, get a hang of. Um, and I'd say in my own experience, the one biggest difficulty is that I'm not a Ruby developer, but I don't need to touch Ruby for the largely to use Jekyll. However, um, the Ruby ecosystem can be a little bit complicated. I've often had times with my, my setup with Ruby locally going haywire, um, and I'm not very well equipped to fixing that. Uh, that being said, that's a rare issue, and I still would highly recommend Jekyll as a tool for somebody who's new to the Jamstack. Hugo is another option um, that I'd highly recommend. Hugo is built with Go. One of the things that that um, makes Hugo special is it because it's built in Go, it is incredibly fast. Building your sites is just crazy fast sometimes, but the first times you use it, you may even wonder if it actually ranked. The other thing I'd say about Hugo is that Hugo's documentation is excellent. It's it's extremely thorough. Whenever I run into an issue, I can find generally find an example in the documentation. So I'd highly recommend that for that reason. The one negative I'd say for, for Hugo would be that Hugo uses Go templating. And I find that that has a bit of a steeper learning curve than say Liquid or other templating languages that you may be used to. Um, and that can present a little bit of a problem, but at the same time, I, I still think Hugo is a fantastic tool 
uh, for somebody new to the Jamstack. Um, and that brings me to, to the last option uh, that I recommended, which is Gatsby. Now, if you're a JavaScript developer, particularly if you're a React developer, Gatsby will feel really, really comfortable. Um, Gatsby has outstanding documentation. It is very, very widely used. It's probably the most popular option today in terms of Jamstack. One of the benefits of Gatsby is that it has a massive plugin library. Um, so pretty much anything you want to integrate with, anything you want to do, you can actually pull a plugin and save yourself having to write the code for that. Um, and that really helps, I think, a lot of beginners. Then one downside of Gatsby, in my opinion, is that if you are not already comfortable with React, you may struggle a little bit getting to understand the concepts of Gatsby because you have to both know React and then there is a little bit of a Gatsby way of doing things, which involves GraphQL and other aspects that, while um, I'm not saying they're particularly difficult, they do have a steeper learning curve if you're not already comfortable with the underlying React concepts. Okay, so next let's take a look at those tools that I might say are open to you if you have some experience with the Jamstack already or are you know a very more experienced developer. Um, and those are Next.js, 11D, Nuxt, and Gridsum. Let me tell you a little bit more about each of them. Okay, first let's look at Next.js. Um, one of the things that makes Next.js unique is that it can be used both for server rendered apps and for Jamstack apps. Um, and I'll be honest, it was one of those that I was borderline between putting it in the prior group or putting it in this grouping. I'd say I leaned on this grouping because, because of that factor that it does both, that when you search for documentation, a lot of it tends to be leaning towards the server rendered apps as opposed to the Jamstack apps. That has been improving and next, I will admit, has excellent documentation. Um, I find it actually relatively easy to use. So I do highly recommend it, um, particularly if you're already comfortable using React. Now, if you're looking for a JavaScript-based tool that doesn't actually use a front-end framework at all, um, then I would look at Eleventy. So Eleventy is JavaScript-based, but does not use any front-end framework like React, Angular, or Vue. Uh, and it's been getting a very passionate fan base, partly because of its simplicity. Um, they, the community feels like it's a very straightforward tool, simple to use. So. Uh, there are a lot more resources out there for Lemony than there used to be, even though Lemony is relatively new to the scene, um, and it's it's been growing rapidly. So if you are looking for a JavaScript tool, and particularly if you're looking for a JavaScript tool that does not rely on a front-end framework, definitely check out Lemony. Now, if you're looking for tools based on Vue because you're a Vue developer and you really want to use Vue in developing your Jamstack applications, Nux.js is a great option. Like Next.js, which it has a very similar name to, not coincidentally, um, Nux can be used for server rendered apps as well as Jamstack apps. Um, and if you're looking for a, a Vue option that does both of those, uh, Nux is definitely an excellent option. It's been around um, for a while, and there is good documentation around it as well. Uh, if you're looking for a Vue tool that's very specific for Jamstack applications, there is Gridsum, and Gridsum has been around for a little while as well. It does have a decent amount of resources. It is well documented, so it is definitely a good option for a targeted um, Jamstack tool for Vue developers. So lastly, let's look at some tools that I'd recommend if you're probably more experienced. Uh, and the reason I put these tools here is not a dig against them. It's not to criticize them. Uh, it's mostly because these are tools that are newer to the scene and therefore there are smaller communities around the tools. There are less resources available for the tools. Um, they may develop those over time, but they're not available just yet. Um, and those three tools would be Redwood.js, Bridgetown, and Scully. Let's take a look at them. First, let's look at Redwood.js. This is unique in many ways. Obviously, it is JavaScript-based, and it does use React. Uh, the thing that makes it unique, though, is it tries to bring a lot of pieces together, like building serverless functions, connecting to a database, authentication, and all that into a more Rails-like ex developer experience. Uh, it is actually quite well documented for a new project. 
I've run through the tutorial myself, so it's it's really good, but it does have a much smaller community and there are fewer external resources that can help you if you get stuck. That being said, it definitely is worth checking out. Bridgetown is another new tool that's only recently come out. Uh, however, Bridgetown is based on a fork of Jekyll. So if you're comfortable in Jekyll, this will feel comfortable, but they've already diverged in a number of ways that that um, make it unique. You know, it's worth checking out definitely if you're interested in a Ruby-based tool, if you are comfortable with Jekyll, but feel like maybe it's missing some stuff. Um, and it is has been very active in development. Obviously, because it is new, there are fewer resources and a smaller community, but I know I've seen the developers who work on this and they've been active out there answering questions and things like that. So, you know, again, if you're in, in the market for a Ruby or Jekyll-like tool, this would be um, a, one to check out. The last one I'm gonna talk about is Scully. Scully came out, I think, late last year. Um, and what makes Scully unique in many ways is that it is the Angular tool. So obviously we've talked about uh, React tools and we've talked about uh, view-based tools, but there hasn't been an Angular tool until Scully. So if you're an Angular developer and you're looking for a solution based on Angular, this is a really interesting tool to look at. They actually do have some very unique features that none of the other engines have. So that's in, worth checking out as well. Uh, and the other thing I'd say is it, it does seem to be very well documented. Um, I'm not an Angular developer, so it's hard for me to judge, but it, it seems like they've built a strong community around it in a short period of time. Um, so if you're on the market for an Angular-based tool, definitely worth looking into. Okay, so the last item I wanna talk about, and because it came up a lot when you talk about these tools, is does the language even matter? And by the language, I mean the language that the tool is built in. So like Jekyll, that would be Ruby, Hugo, that would be Go, Gatsby, that would be JavaScript, and so on. I would argue that no, the language, generally speaking, does not matter to you. So don't take that as a major factor in choosing whether or not you want to try a tool. As an example, if I'm in Jekyll, I'm largely going to be working template templating in Liquid. Um, and I'm not actually going to really have to mess with Ruby at all. I've used Jekyll for years, um, and I don't know Ruby at all, to be quite honest. Uh, the same goes for Hugo. I use, I've use i used Hugo for years as well, and I am would not say I'm a Go developer by any means. Uh, that being said, um, if you're a JavaScript developer, there's a lot of solutions out there for you nowadays. Uh, if you have a particular preference for a language or framework, you can take that into account. Um, but I wouldn't let that be a determining factor in whether you choose to use a tool or not. I would actually argue that things like um, the documentation, the community, um, and the number, you know, the continuous updating of a particular tool are all going to be factors that matter in the longer term more than the specific underlying language the tool was built in. All right, that's it for me today. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you if you are in the market for a st new static site generator or your first static site generator. Uh, if you want to explore this topic further, I did actually write an article on the same topic that covers much of what I covered here, uh, but it goes into a little bit more detail and has some links that might be useful to you. So you can find that at stackbit.com slash blog. Um, you can also reach out to me at Remote Synth on Twitter or follow Stackbit at StackbitHQ on Twitter. Thanks again.